It's all right, lads. It's on with me. Hey, up, lads. Shut up, Paddy. You've got to see white here, then. No, mate. Cassie said they might come down, though. I know she said they might come down. I'm asking if they've been down, though. <laughs> what are you laughing for, Eddie? I don't know, mate, to be honest. You're all these lot, then? He's just, just my mates. You're a weird looking lot, ain't you? Hang on, Bob, what's your name? Ralph. You're Ralph, yeah? Stand up for me. Why? I said stand up, you little prick, so stand up. What have you been saying about White, eh? Oh, no. No. No, no. You said you were going to smack him, didn't you? No. Oh, yes, you did, Ralph, and he's going to smack you for it. Who oh, but he didn't. I was there. What do you mean you were there, Addy? As in I was there when he didn't say it. That don't make no fucking sense, Addy. Because what we heard, right, is that you told Cassie that you're going to smack White, eh? Ain't that right, Addy? Um. Go on, Addy. You can tell the truth. You sure? Yes, Addy. All right. Then I did tell her. Addy! You said tell the truth. False truth, not real truth. So you did say it then, Ralph, yeah? Why are you going to smack me? Oh, yeah. He's going to fucking batter you, Mush. When's he going to batter me? As soon as he sees you. Well, what if I smack him first? What if you smack him first? What? <laughs> what, so you're saying you want to have a fight with Whitey then, Ralph, yeah? Yeah. Like a proper fight, yeah? Yeah. Like kids around you in circles shouting, fighting, everything, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I can be referee. Don't need a fucking referee, Craggy. Yeah, shut up, Craggy. Shut up, Craggy. All right, then, boys. The wreck, Friday, five o'clock. No. Whitey always has his tea at five. All right, the wreck, Friday, six o'clock. We'll give him some time for it to go down. All right, the wreck, Friday, 6.15. All right. Oh, big man, Ralph, big man. Sign your own death warrant there, lad. I told you there was sound. They're not fucking sound, Addy. I'm gonna be head kicked, it's all your fault. I'm sorry, mate. I just don't want to look into Cassie's eyes. I want to tell her all my secrets. I can't help it. Can't blame you, mate. I'm the same with Fielder. I told her Craggy's only got one ball last week. <laughs> I've got two balls. I've got two balls. Wouldn't impress her though, would it? <laughs> this is it then, isn't it? Goodbye, Ralph. Get the hell, Craggy. I'm not going to die. Ralph. Yes, then. No, I've got nothing. Come on, Ralph. Right over. <laughs> Ralph, I ain't gonna batter you. You've taken enough. Where's Rachel? She didn't come, Ralph. Come on, man, let's get out of here. 
Yeah. Get you to your mum's house, man. You did all right, bro. You did all right. It's, it's not bad. It's fine, right, man. What do I look like? Excuse me. What is your problem, mate? Um. I just wanted to say sorry. Sorry? Yeah, for, um. Got the red mist and, uh. Um. I was acting like a prick. And, um. Yeah, just get out on you. Okay, pal. Yes, um. So just have a good night, yeah? You too, mate. Thanks. Your shirt sweat. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just squeezing that. Um, what was that? Um, I was just saying sorry to him. And uh, but more importantly, I'm sorry to you. It's fine. I shouldn't have been. It's okay. Look, no, I'm sorry. You don't be sorry. Uh, that's me. That's on me. Um, do you want to go? Maybe. Um. My friends are still here, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You stay. I'm gonna head. I'm gonna get an early one. You're just gonna go... Have a bath. All right, I just... I haven't had a night out in ages, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll do something tomorrow. And talk about it tomorrow, and, uh, yeah. OK. OK. But yeah. All right, then. Love you. Love you, too. Um, I'll see you tomorrow, yeah? Yeah. Yes, sir. Does it look like it? Well, you might have stashed it in them clown pockets that you got. <laughs> this is my dead uncle's suit, you little prick. What, he died of being fucking huge? No, he slipped and cracked his head in the shower. Didn't feel a thing, apparently. That's how I want to go. Oh, shit, bro. Come on, let's go. Keep going, boys. Ralph, come on. Nah. Fuck that. Now then, Ralph. Will you buy us some booze? You what? Will you buy us some booze? What's just happened there, Tinhead? Ralph just started you to buy him booze, Rupert. What, Ralph? We got battered a couple of weeks back for being a mouthy little prick and not knowing his place. He's asking me, why his mate, to buy him booze? Yeah, blag's head, that. How do you feel about that, Tinhead? I don't know. How do you feel about it, Rupert? No, I think it's funny. I think it's real funny. I think it's proper funny. Ha 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 ha! Cheeky little prick, asking me to buy you booze? Cheeky, take some real stones. Yeah, let's have a look at that shiner. Oh, it's a beauty, that lad. Look at that, Tinhead. Ah, it's a proper nice and Yeah, that. gorgeous, isn't it? All yellows and blues <laughs> and that. Why does it do that, Tinhead? It's due to the breakdown of hemoglobin. Just, just no shit like that, Tinhead, you know, it's mad. Right, now then, boys. Hey, Craggy. Well done for making effort to look smart on Friday night, mate. Like a proper little mogul on that, don't you? Don't you like a mogul to yeah, Exactly like a mogul. Yeah, a proper mogul, man. Right, so what, you want us to buy you some drinks, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you will. All right, what do you want, then? Uh, yeah, cider. Fun the lemon. Tell you what, I'll take your money and I'll pick for you, lads, all right? Fucking hell, I feel like guy out of uh, Oliver Twist. All the orphans. Fagin. Fagin, I feel like Fagin, to be honest, Tinhead. Come on, mate, let's get you a drink. MB, I was completely battered by this point. So what follows is an approximation of a memory, really, rather than a totally reliable one. Out of a fucking sick night. <laughs> Tomorrow... It's just gonna be back to normal fucking life, innit? You know what, Creo, mate? Tomorrow is not what we are in. We are... That will fucking... <laughs> You're my mate. <laughs> All right, You're my mate. All right, lad. No, but seriously, though, I fucking... I love you a lot. And sometimes I don't think you know it, cos... Because you don't think I'm one of the lads or you think I'm a fucking geek or whatever. Oh, no, we love you for it, Matt. 
love you, fam. Hey, Rob, you love Rachel, right? Yeah. She loves you too, mate. She don't. Why would she have such a massive fucking gulp me today, she did? Because she loves you. I agree with that. Are you alright, Addy? To be honest, I was a bit fucking upset about what happened earlier. I appreciate you lot trying to help in that, but it's not fucking on, man. I didn't choose to move to this town. My dad made us come here for his job so we can have more money and a better life in that boat. Nights like tonight. Makes me wish I was still in Dewsbury. It was hard to know what to say to this, but um, I'd like to think I managed something to offer Addy some solace. Addy, what happened tonight was completely not on. I'm sorry that you have to experience this idiotic and intolerant behaviour. This is a society that, for the most part, is good and tolerant. But yes, those that are bigoted and intolerant manage to make their voices loudest. OK, I think I might have slightly romanticised this memory in my own favour. And this is only going to get worse in a few years after the global financial crisis. Which... <clears throat> OK, yeah. Total fabrication. I guess Addy was left to find his own solace. It's all right, lads. I'm glad you guys had a good night anyway. <laughs> Come here. I suppose Addy was right. Being hammered allowed us to open up and share with each other. And this established a pattern of behaviour I've repeated every weekend for 15 years in search of adventure and confidence and connection. But there must be other ways to connect with people on a Friday night. Here we have the, here we have the boys, your new boys, your new friends. James here. Give him a big hug, James. It's in its ass. <laughs> oh, I actually remember that spare key you got me for once. I'm so sorry I'm late. I got stuck in a really difficult problem with the climbing wall. But anyway, I cannot wait to try this chicken. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, hmm. oh yeah, I was going to do the recipe from the men's cookery club, huh? I just didn't really have the energy for that in the end. Hmm. But you had the energy to kick the shit out of the bin. How was work? Fine. How did the pitch go? I want to start off by thanking you guys for this opportunity to pitch my ideas for an exciting new direction for Buccaneer Bill Rum. I want to teach you a new word today. Rumification. I am envisioning the rumification of Manchester, the rumification of Scotland. The rumification of Ripon. Buccaneer Bill is a problematic buccaneer. This is something what we I want can us to focus on as a virtue. Deproblematizing pirate masculinity. I want us to think about the semiotics of cola bubbles. And I really hope you can take on board some of these, if I say so myself, brilliant ideas for our brand. Um I think, to be honest, I think I think we'll just stick with what we've got, though. Rum is fun. Is that is that a concept? It's a rhyme. It's not even a rhyme. It's a half rhyme. It, that sucks. Yes. Kicking the bin just seems like a pretty immature way to react, though. No. Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart, and the fall through the air the true wise friend called Piggy. So, so that's, for me, basically about boyhood sensitivity of the emotional wisdom and, and potential loss in restrictive notions of, of masculinity. The correct answer is actually stormy weather equals tension. But thank you for that completely unprompted speech, Liam. You can sit down now, and next time, don't stand up and come to the front unless I ask you to. Right. For this chapter... My old English teacher, Mr Dreyfus. Absolute goon. He thinks you're an old bed. He thinks you're an old bed. He thinks you're an old bed. Shit. Look, I'm just going to say it. I think you're showing signs of anxiety and depression. Like what? Well, anger, 
What are you talking about? Self-loathing? Sorry for getting angry. I know I'm pathetic. I'm a child. Overthinking? No. I know you think that, but it's not true. I've been thinking for a while that you think I'm overthinking, but that's just a perception that you have, that you're putting on me, that then starts to actually get inside my head and does... Stop. Just... Stop. You say you're going to get your shit together. You say you're going to take up slam poetry again. It's not actually slam poetry. You never do. You say you want us to move in together, but you can't even treat your own possessions with any respect. You say you want to be more active, but whenever I ask you to come climbing, you just say no. It's because you don't like heights. No. I just don't like the sort of people who go to climbing walls. See, this is the whole thing. You know, you just... You used to be more positive and fun and just up for stuff. You know, there used to be this... I don't know... Unhappy. <sighs> Look, I... I know how you feel. But when I went to therapy... I, I don't really... need to go for therapy. I haven't got anxiety and depression or anything like that. I'm just from the North. I mean, being from the North is not a mental health condition. Jess, you're from the Midlands. You wouldn't understand. So sulking, Liam. Oh, look, lad, of course you're gonna feel bad sometimes. Life is bad, but you've just gotta fight it, innit? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. I don't tell many folk. Many years ago, I competed for Yorkshire in national badminton championships. If I'd have won, I would have made the Olympics, but I weren't in the right place, mentally. It's a long story and I won't go into it. But basically, I was having an affair with my brother's wife at the time. So he is going into it. They were both in the crowd, and I was very, very distracted. They were sitting over to the left, and every time I played my backhand, I could see them, and I'd think, her love for him will survive anything I can offer her. And my wife didn't care so... whether... Right, sorry. Anyway, the point is, after that, my badminton career fell apart. But did I give up? No. No. And now I've got my own BMW. I've met Michael Parkinson. I'm semi-divorced and I spend two nights a week in a travel lodge. Is... is he proud of that? What I'm saying is... You should never give up. Never, ever accept defeat, whether it's in a game of badminton or to a feeling of depression. Over the fact that you've lost a game of badminton, never give up. Williams! Yes, lad. Williams! Oh. Stolter! Williams again! Stolter! Williams! Oh. Stolter! Williams! Stolter! Oh. We can definitely offer you support, but first I have to refer you for an assessment with a mental health practitioner. That will be in about six weeks. Six weeks? And if they feel that some form of therapy would be helpful, there'll be a wait of about three months. <sighs> um, look, the, the, the truth is, like, I, I do care about this, but my girlfriend really cares about this, as in me coming here, like it's almost um, an ultimatum or something. And I sense that I might actually only have a few weeks to, to show her that I've changed, to potentially save the relationship. So taking that into account, is there anything you could do to kind of speed up the process? Obviously not. No. In the meantime, and I know this sounds basic, but it is helpful. I don't know if you do any exercise or have any active hobbies. Well done, hon! So proud of you! Amazing! Fuck, Mel. Fuck's sake.